In the next few videos, we're going to work on some improvements to the clicker game. So as you can see, this is my new game here. Uh, it works kind of the same. You still click here to get more score and you can still buy clickers, but obviously you've got a few differences. So first of all, we've got these uh, highlighting borders whenever I'm moused over what I want to click on. We've also got actual images here to click on instead. It's kind of formatted a little nicer in general and uh, our uh, the auto clicker does some really cool things. Let me sh get enough clicks. I have to get a thousand clicks to show you that. So give me one second. So now that I have a thousand clicks, if I buy an auto clicker, you'll notice that every one second it clicks for me. And so those are the features I want to be adding uh, today. So let's take a look at how to do that. Getting started today, the very first thing we're going to want to do is put our project in a folder because we're about to add some image files and other files and uh, it'll be useful to have it all in the same place so it's not just all over your desktop. So go ahead and find your file wherever it is on your computer. Mine's called Working Copy. And uh, I'm going to click right click and say New Folder. And you can name this folder uh, whatever you want, but having your name in it would be good. And then just go ahead and drag your files into your copy. Right now you should only have one. It'll look something like this. Later we'll be adding more files to it. For now, go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. And if it, it's not going to be able to find your file now. It's not going to open automatically. So you're going to have to go up here and click uh, close this welcome message and say file, open file, and then find wherever you saved it on your computer. So mine was in desktop under Keller Flint, and I can click right here on what I, mine's called working copy and say open. And there we go. I've got my files now. I also want to make sure I can see the changes I'm making. So I'm going to close this for just a second here, make it a little smaller and open up my folder and double click on the working copy. And that's going to bring up uh, the actual page for your game. And I'm going to put that on one side and I'm going to put my code on the other side so I can see everything I'm doing. All right, so the next step here is going to be to arrange our HTML into the same form that we had on the other game. So some of it's going to stay the same. Uh, this part will stay the same and the message will stay the same here. Uh, we'll probably move clickers is going to be lower. It's going to be part of the store and buy more clickers is a button isn't going to even exist. Uh, score will still exist and click here will still exist. But let me so let me move some of those around a little bit. First off, I'm going to create a section called store. And uh, I'm going to make it an H2, which is going to show it a little bit smaller than our H1 up here. The H2 is going to be a smaller version. I'm going to call it store. Um, if I reload, it's not going to show up here, but that's just because it's uh, black text on a black background. So if we want to fix that, we can go up here and add a rule for H2 that says something like color, uh, let's do pink. There we go. And now our store shows up right down here. So just for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and delete clickers right now. Um, and we'll have it look like this. Because uh, this is what I want to show up. And I'm also going to get rid of this uh, buy more clicks button. That's not going to be there anymore. So you can refresh it. And that's what it looks like now. All right. So the first thing I want, if we open up our model project here real quick. Oop. The first thing I want to do is add these little parts here for the store. So I want to add the clicker that's worth 10 clicks. So it's price right here. Then I want to add the image and then I want to add the number of clickers I currently have. So those are the three elements I need to add for each one of these. To do that, we're going to need a few new elements under our store. So the first one is just going to be a paragraph tag and all it's going to do is just tell us how much it costs and what the item is. So I could say something like for me, that's going to be clicker and it's going to cost 10, uh, 10 clicks. So if I reload the page, it shows up right there. Clicker 10 clicks. Underneath that, I'm going to want the actual image of the clicker. And uh, for now, we don't actually have the images. We can put the tag there and to sort of show what it would look like. To create an image tag, you're going to use the open angle brace and say IMG. And unlike all the other tags we've used, the image tag doesn't have a closing tag. It's just the image tag. And inside of the image tag between these two angle braces, we're going to put all the things we want to tell the image, like its, uh, its width, the text that should display if it doesn't work and the source where the link to the actual image. Um, so for now, we're just going to put uh, alt equals and we're going to say this is going to be the clicker image. And what this is going to do, the alt text is just what shows if the image fails to load, if it doesn't load for some reason. So that's going to show us is a little image here and it says clicker, but it's again in white. So you can't tell uh, if we want to fix that so that our alt text actually shows up. We can say IMG and color white. 
and there it is. So now we know where our clicker will be, even if we don't have it quite yet. We know where it's going to be on the page. So we can keep building out our page knowing that's where it's going to be in the future. The next thing we need is another paragraph tag. And this one is going to keep track of our total number of clickers right now. So it's going to start at time zero. So I'm just going to put in time zero for now. And we'll worry about how to refresh that using JavaScript a little bit later. If I refresh, this is what it should look like. That's what we want. The next thing I want to talk about is how to actually get some of these images for our website. When you're building a website, it's really important that you only use resources that people have allowed you to use. You can't just go over to like, you know, Nintendo and steal Mario from them. That's their like intellectual property. You can't just use it. There's copyright laws. So we want to go somewhere where there where people have uh, agreed to share their work uh, for free. And so a good place for that that I like is uh, Pixel Bay. Okay. Pixabay, sorry. It's this one right here, pixabay.com. If you click on it, you can search for all sorts of stuff. Please keep it appropriate. I'm going to look for a cursor and find one I like. I think I like this one. Or oh, wait, no, let's see. I like this one. We're going to go with this one. And then once you've found it, you can go ahead and there'll be a download button, a free download button. And probably you want to click the smallest resolution they have and just say download. And then it'll download uh, and that looks good to me. So now I have the file downloaded. I'm going to go into my file explorer and find it in downloads. And I'm going to move it into the same place that my project is. So my project is on desktop. So I'm going to click this and drag it into desktop. Oop, I missed. There we go. And now if I click on desktop, you'll see it's right here, the cursor thing. And then I'm going to click it again and I'm going to drag it into my actual project. There we go. So in the end, it should look like this. You should have your image right next to your project files. I would also rename this image to something easy. I would get rid of all these numbers and things at the end and just call it something like cursor. Now that we have our image, we can actually link to it in our project. So in the image tag right here, I can say SRC equals and then the name of the actual image. So let's see. So I called mine cursor. So cursor dot png. The extension is probably going to be dot png on yours. And if I reload, there you go. There's my cursor. The one problem is this cursor is absolutely enormous. So there's another attribute here we can add inside these angle braces for the image, which is called width. And we can set it equal to uh, 50 pixels px. And if we reload, there we go. That looks a lot better. That's probably about the size I want it to be. You can change it to whatever you want. If you make it, you know, a bigger number, it'll be a little bigger. You can pick and feel, see, see what feels right to you. Finally, to make this look the same as that model website I showed, uh, we need another thing. We don't just have clickers. We also have the auto clicker we can buy down here. Um, and so that's going to look very similar to the code we have here. If you want, you can type it all out, but you can also just copy it all and hit control and C at the same time and that'll copy it and control and V will paste it. And then we can just change up these uh, names. So this will be the auto clicker and it'll cost for me, it's going to cost, let's say a hundred clicks for now. So it's easy to test. Uh, it's alt will be the auto clicker and we'll keep it with it 50 probably. And again, we'll start at zero. Now that I think about it, actually, we'll, we'll start at one clicker because you always get one every time you click. So this should probably be times one. The other thing we need to do, of course, is change our image. Right now it's going to show the exact same image. So, you know, you can go back to Pixel Bay and find one that you like. Uh, I'm going to go for this one, I think. And click download. Probably click the smallest resolution unless you want it huge. Download it and then go ahead and find it in your files, in your downloads. Uh, mine's called cursor again, which is very confusing. Uh, but I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it into my desktop. And then from my desktop, I'm going to drag it into my project folder, Keller Flint. There we go. And so now they're all in here. I'm also going to rename it to something a little easier. I'm going to call this one the auto clicker with a dash. Don't use spaces uh, in your file names. Spaces really confuse computers. And then I'm going to go back to my project. And now that they're in the same place, I can change this to auto clicker dot PNG. And when I reload, there you go. So that's the basic layout and structure of the web page that I showed you before. 
Next time we'll get into a little bit of the CSS and adding that those borders in the hover effect where it highlights them if your mouse is over it.